Is science fiction really fiction, or is it just the future waiting to happen? Author Frank Herbert says it's a little bit of both. His books, under the Dune title, takes us to a strange planet where life and death is determined by a spice, which is carefully doled out by a leader who is a humanoid and the process of becoming a worm. Now, now before I, I ask you about the statement of that, Frank, <laughs> I, why is there a tendency for people to chuckle when they hear what I just, what I just said, to sneer, to smirk? Well, uh, I think it, it, it makes people uncomfortable, the idea that a human being can become something other than a human being, especially something mindless out of the depths. Uh, I'm very heavily imbued with Jungian psychology, so I think that we do have a sense of, of uh, the mindless animal in the depths of but, all of but us. But science fiction, when people say science fiction, they automatically go, ah. Eh. Yeah, but I write science fiction for people who don't read science fiction. And people who read science fiction but, also. But you were just telling me that you were, you were going after that general readership. Oh, yes. But you were frankly a little bit surprised when it went over as big as it did. Why? Well, I didn't... It, you, you don't wait for that. You go on to do another story. And then when it happened, it happened big. And I was very surprised by how big it, it came along. You've said science fiction writing can have a missionary impact. Could you elaborate on that for me a little bit? Well, I think it first has to be entertaining. <clears throat> because if it's not entertaining, nobody's going to read it. Uh, I put a, a pot of message in there with a mess of pottage. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is the message? What is the statement well, that, that you're attempting to make here? Uh, don't trust leaders to always be right. <clears throat> uh, I, I worked to create a, a leader in this book who would be really an attractive, charismatic person for all the good reasons, not for any bad reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, then power comes to him. He makes decisions. Some of his m decisions made for millions of people, millions upon millions of people, don't work out too well. In a general sense, not in a specific one about Leto and, and about yeah. Planet Arrakis, but in a very general sense, do you make this, this statement because you're disenchanted with the way others are viewing the future or preparing for the future? Well, I think that, that our society was formed on a distrust for government. And uh, uh, we seem to have lost that distrust of government. I, I kid around and I say that uh, my favorite president in recent years has been Richard Nixon because he taught us to distrust government. <laughs> What is it, that government is, is a shared illusion, and when the myth dies, oh, yes. the, the, myth the dies, government the, disappears? That's right. Um, religion, government, other institutions, um, do you see them in any way preparing for what Frank Herbert sees as the vision, vision of the future? No, I, I have a very passionate concern for posterity. Another thing uh, upon which this nation was founded, with a decent concern for posterity. And uh, unfortunately, posterity doesn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> Dune, is, Dune is going to become a, a Dino De Laurentiis movie uh, That's right. that Frank Herbert has written the screenplay for. Are we to expect another Star Wars type spectacle? I really uh, am expecting uh, much more of a David Lynch uh, movie. Uh, David has really written the uh, screenplay. Uh, I hope he's using a lot of the stuff that I gave him, and I, but I haven't seen the screenplay. It'll be ready next Friday. Uh, we are expecting the movie in a year. Uh, at the end of 83. How many more dunes to come? At least one more. Good enough. Frank Herbert, thank you. Thank you. I was almost a historian. I seriously considered being a historian. And while I was in the throes of this decision, I came on the idea that leaders <coughs> amplify the mistakes. Their, their mistakes are amplified by the numbers who follow them without question. And charismatic leaders tend to build up followings power structures, and those power structures tend to be taken over by people who are corruptible. I don't think that the old saw about uh, power corrupting and absolute power mm. corrupting absolutely is accurate. I think power attracts the corruptible. Dune is conceived of as a, as a planet that is totally desert, so that water on it is the metaphor of, say, oil here, uh, very appropriate at the moment. Uh, it is a metaphor of uh, clean air, metaphor of water itself, I mean, potable water. And it's a metaphor for the shortages that we are encountering because of overpopulation. Mm. And the story is uh, told in, uh, in terms of, the, of people who are recognizable. You'd recognize these people, but they live in a culture that is somewhat different.